So, transatlantic is the second work in which you put Ireland into focus after everything in this country must. Now, would you say the transatlantic can be considered the great Irish novel that your fans have been waiting for, mm. or is that too highly put? Uh, I don't think there's any such thing as a, a, a as a as a great novel. I think all novels all fall a little bit short of what you really want them to be, and I think that's the best way, because failure in a way is is vivifying. But for me, it is my big Irish novel. Um, I don't know if it's a great novel or not. I leave that for other people to 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 say or not say. Uh, I just hope that people enjoy it. No, Irish literary history is huge, you know, with Shaw mm -hmm. and Yeats and Beckett and Heaney. How, how important were these for your literary socialization and all the writers? Well, I grew, grew up in Ireland and um, I think you know, the thing is that you get your voice from the voices of others. So within my voice, even, even if you haven't read Joyce, Joyce is there. But I, 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 Joyce is a big is a big uh, influence for me. Of course, Joyce and Beckett and Edna O'Brien and, and and all those voices that are there. But I also have a um, a, a large sort of um, American influence to my work too. So when I was younger, I was quite involved with um, the idea of the beat writers, Kerouac and Ginsberg and Ferlinghetti and, and and people like that. So um, I have a sort of transatlantic uh, temperature going with some of the work. You were 21 when you left Ireland. What was the reason for leaving? Why? I left Ireland because I was curious, because I wanted to do something crazy for a little while. A lot of my contemporaries left because they had no jobs or because they felt the culture was oppressive or the church was oppressive. I was in a fairly good position. I was 21. I had a job and I just left because I wanted to, to, to sort of um, Emile Zola talks about living your life out loud. So I went and uh, went to the United States, took a bicycle across the United States, met all sorts of people. I have many crazy stories that I've yet to tell. I'll be telling them over the next few years. <laughs> Some of them I have to censor. Um, but um, so I went really out of curiosity and a desire to to, to expand my lungs, really. Could transatlantic be viewed as an attempt of the topography of belonging to kind of determine the, the describe the features and, and your lives? Yeah, Can I think for me, uh, transatlantic was a form of return. Um, Joseph Brodsky says you can't go back to the country that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, but it depends on how you construe that country, if it's a country of the imagination or a country of memory. Um, for me, this was a way for me to return back to, 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 to my homeland. Um, but to go back in a different guise, go back in a different sort of exciting thing, to go back and say the body of uh, Frederick Douglass, uh, 27 year old African American slave, that's, ex that's an exciting thing to do. To go back in, a, in an open cockpit plane, to go back in the, in the guise of um, Senator George Mitchell. And then to, to sort of capture all these. Um, the web of women that sort of um, bring all these people together. That was um, much of what I wanted to talk about. And I wanted to talk about peace, the peace process, which is very important to me. Um, and and, and the, the, the nature of the sort of anonymous and how the anonymous um, uh, is of great value. And that, that every small moment has, um, has a knock on to another moment. Oh. You moved to New York in the early 1990s. Now, would you I, I, I thought you were going to say you moved to New York in the early 1900s. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that old. <laughs> uh, would you consider yourself Irish, American, or a New Yorker, which is a totally different heritage Man. in itself? If I mean, I, I'm I'm a I'm a lot of different things, but um, if if you ha if I had a gun to my head, I'd say I'm a New Yorker. Um, <laughs> What sort of New Yorker? I'm definitely an Irish New Yorker. Um, that puts me in the category with about 100 billion others. But um, you know, I, I still maintain uh, a loyalty to where I, uh, I came from. I carry my Irish passport. And I love the idea of being in New York because New York is a sort of elsewhere. And you can belong there uh, and feel comfortable there and yet also belong to somewhere else. And that's one of the, 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 the important things for me. 
not only about New York but about the United States too that you can be in the United States but you can still belong to the country that you came from before which doesn't always apply to immigrants um, in other countries so I find a sort of generosity in relation to that but also there's a tension too so um, a tension between you know where you came from and where you exist now what do you hope your readers take away from Atlantic transatlantic sorry I like the idea that a reader uh, is slightly mystified by the story, that they finish the story for themselves. Uh, I mean, the one thing I, that I don't want to do is to tell anybody what to think. I'm not interested in being didactic in any way. I don't think I'm smart enough to be didactic, and I'm, but I'm, uh, what I want to do is open the world for a reader so that she or he goes in and establishes the truth that belongs to themselves. So that um, uh, I like the idea that a reader is agile, and agile enough to know that they then become the storyteller. It's not just me who's the storyteller, they become the storyteller and they take it away and then they change it and it morphs and it keeps, and it keeps moving. Uh, I hope it doesn't give too much away to say the last line of the book says we have to thank the world for not ending on us and that applies very much to a book too. I mean I would have to say that I w uh, my philosophy would be is that we'd have to thank a poem or a chapter or a sentence or a novel for not ending on us. When it ends on us, it becomes didactic and sort of uninteresting. The real beauty is in um, leaving it open-ended. Thank you for taking your time. Thank you. There was, by the way... Thank you.